Welcome back. Today is the International Day of Mathematics, also known as Pi Day. So how is South Africa faring when it comes to the subject? Basic Education Minister Angie Mochecha says a number of schools have dropped maths, and she says the main reason is a shortage of teachers. For more, I'm joined by Soshan Subramani from the South African Mathematical Foundation. Soshan, thanks very much for your time this afternoon. Before we get into the heavy stuff, I want to start with something a little bit lighter. Um, as a child, as a teenager, mathematics was probably my least favorite subject. I dreaded it. I think many South African learners do. Um, for many, it's quite traumatic. Um, but yet, it can be a lot of fun. I don't believe it quite yet, but I'm sure you're going to convince me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, I think it can be a lot of fun, but the reality is that for many, many learners and teachers, mm. mathematics just dreads. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a dreadful subject and something scary, something to be afraid of. Um, in my experience, I don't believe that there's somebody that's good in mathematics and that somebody that is naturally bad at mathematics. I think it's about enjoying the subject and learning how to enjoy the subject. And the way you learn, the kind of information that's made accessible to you. Yes. I think so. So on International Day of Mathematics, give us, do something that makes me believe <laughs> that mathematics is something I should be paying more attention to. Okay, well, um, one interesting maths problem that I read about recently uh, is called, well, I won't say the name because then it's going to give away okay. the answer, but it's about if you had a map of South Africa and all its provinces, and let's say you wanted to break it down into smaller and smaller pieces of land, how many colors would you need to color the whole map without having two of the same color next to each other. And it turns out that this was a fascinating problem that with all the maths in the world remained unsolved for many, many years, uh, many centuries in fact. And it turned out that the answer was four and it was proven um, recently. And when I say recently, in the last couple of hundred of years. Okay. Um, yeah, I can show you a cool maths trick if, if, that I remember from primary yeah, school. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> go for it. Well, Mathematics is the study of patterns, and one of the patterns I can think of now is when you multiply by nine. Mm. So we were all taught to learn nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18. Um, but my dad, I think it was my dad who taught me this trick, is that if you show, put your, your fingers up, and if you want to look for nine times two, you put the second finger down, and the answer is one and eight, which is 18. Wow. If you want to do nine times four, the answer is Three and 36. six, thirty-six. <laughs> that makes it so easy. I wish I had learned that as a kid. <laughs> so, Sean, unfortunately, um, we also have to get into the sort of more serious side of mathematics because we have such a problem with maths in South Africa. Um, in, in the intro, I, I mentioned that um, Education Minister Angie Mochecha has said that many schools have dropped maths ma as a subject, and that's due to a lack of teachers. Part of what, your, what the SAMF does is to promote mathematics and, and excellence in mathematics by engaging with both teachers and learners. What, where do we start fixing this problem? Yeah. It is a big problem, and I think many people are aware of how uh, severe the issue is in South Africa. There are quite a few international studies where we've ranked either last or second last out of many countries. But there are lots of people working on this problem. Um, the Department of Basic Education has also implemented a new framework called a, a teaching and learning framework for mathematics in the country. And the idea behind that is to encourage people to participate, um, not necessarily to teach that there's only one way of doing something, but to allow students and learners to express themselves, figure out their own methods, understand concepts. And I think that's the right way to go. Um, there are lots of people who've worked on that and figured out that this is actually the way to inspire and to motivate people. Maths is a very interactive subject, so it shouldn't be taught as a parrot learning didactive subject. Absolutely. It's a, it's a really beautiful subject and I think many people are put off if they get something wrong. I think getting something wrong is something worth celebrating. You celebrate because it means you can learn something. Yeah. And you've, you've, you've walked a pathway that just maybe you took a different turn somewhere. Yes. Now, moving on from the education field to perhaps after schooling um, in the workplace, um, I know there have been many programs, government programs as well, uh, to try and innovate and create new opportunities for people to, uh, who excel at mathematics to practice that in their career. Uh, where is the SAMF uh, 
active or contributing to that innovation. Okay. So the South African Maths Foundation has now started working with lots of professionals. So we're working with the accounting, uh, the accounting profession, SICA. We're working with the actuarial profession, the Actuarial Society of South Africa. We're trying to get the engineers on board. <laughs> so if, if, they, if their engineers are there... If they can take their to. attention away from this <laughs> thing for one minute, they'll participate. Yeah. So the idea is that we're, we, we're getting professions to play more of an active role in reaching out where schools need our help. You know, the private sector can do a lot, and we have a lot of resources in the private sector. So I think the idea is to really try to collaborate and work on the problems together. So with the South African Maths Foundation, we run programs like the Olympiads uh, for the high school students and the South African Maths Challenge for the primary school students. And this week, in, in celebration of International Day of Mathematics, we ran the first round of those two competitions. And there were about 200,000 learners across the country who, who played a part in that. Thanks. So I think, it's, I think it's, there are lots of people trying to get the message out and work together to, to help, help our students thrive in mathematics mm -hmm. and then also allow them to figure out what they can do with mathematics post school and mm. possibly post-university. Well, that certainly sounds like progress. Thank you very much for your time. I have been uh, speaking to Sushan Subramani from the South African Mathematics Foundation, uh, as today is the International Day of Mathematics.